Man hört heutzutage viel über Stammzellen. Aber was sind denn Stammzellen? Wo kommen sie her und was wissen wir eigentlich wirklich über sie? Im Inneren unserer Körper gibt es eine mikroskopische Welt, betriebsam und komplex wie die Welt um uns herum. Stammzellen bauen diese Welt auf und erhalten sie. Dies ist die Geschichte von Stammzellen und ihrem Leben innerhalb und außerhalb unserer Körper. Das Leben beginnt mit einer einzelnen Zelle, der befruchteten Eizelle. Während der Entwicklung teilen sich die Zellen immer und immer wieder, um die Milliarden von Zellen zu produzieren, aus denen unser Körper besteht. Zu bestimmten Zeiten hören die meisten Zellen auf, Kopien von sich selbst zu machen und beginnen stattdessen, sich zu spezialisieren. Wenn wir erwachsen sind, sind fast alle unserer Zellen spezialisiert. Cells are very beautiful things when you see them down the microscope. Normally they're so minuscule we can't see them, even though they won't make us all. And each type of cell has its own characteristic. Some types of cell grow together, very closely together and form beautiful patterns. Other types of cell will move away from one another. Some cells become big, other cells are always very small. It depends on what type of cell they are. Diese unterschiedlichen Zelltypen arbeiten in spezialisierten Teams. Einige transportieren Sauerstoff durch das Blutgefäßsystem. Einige sind für das Strecken und Zusammenziehen unserer Muskeln verantwortlich. Einige vermitteln Nachrichten zwischen unserem Gehirn und dem Rest unseres Körpers. Stem cells are very special cells and they act as a, a reservoir, really, because the specialized cells can no longer make copies of themselves. So if they die, get used up, then they have to be replaced from somewhere. And this is where the stem cells function. Stem cells are used in the blood system. We need to make millions of new blood cells every single day. And these are generated from stem cells. And these cells actually live in the bone marrow. Altogether, the blood stem cell can make eight different types of specialized cell. They're used in the skin. We need to make new skin cells all the time because we're always wearing away our skin. And actually now we know they're present even in the brain. We always have to make new stem cells so that they're not completely exhausted because otherwise we'd lose the capacity to make any new cells at all. So the stem cell has to make a decision. Every time it divides, it produces two daughter cells, and those daughter cells can be new stem cells, or they can be specialized cells. Stem cells in the adult tissues can normally only make the type of cell in that tissue. So a stem cell in the skin can make cells of the skin, but it can't make blood cells and vice versa. Stammzellen sind schon heute nützlich für die Medizin. Eine einzige Hautstammzelle kann so viele spezialisierte Hautzellen produzieren, dass diese ausreichen, um unseren gesamten Körper zu bedecken. Dies war ein medizinischer Durchbruch für die Behandlung von großflächigen Verbrennungen. When a person is heavily burned, what we do, we take a sample from an unburn area and this skin sample uh, we take it apart and we get the cells out of it and we uh, seed these cells in a culture flask like this one. And we feed the cells with a special liquid, which is full of protein and sugars. You know, they need to, to eat, like you. And uh, at some point, these cells will divide, will multiply, and they will cover the entire 
uh, bottom of the flask. We uh, remove these cells using a special chemical, and we uh, get uh, this uh, sheet of cells into the uh, surgery room, and we transplant the patient with it. We can do only part of the skin today, uh, which means we can do the most outermost layer of the skin, uh, which is very important because without this layer, you will not be able to survive. However, uh, we cannot uh, reconstruct sweat glands or air follicles. So these burned patients, uh, their life has been saved with stem cells, but they have no air and they don't sweat. That uh, is obviously a problem. I mean, they are alive, but I cannot say they have a normal life like you and me. Uh, so that's why you know, many laboratories around the world are trying to understand how the skin is built to be able to reconstruct it in the lab so we can improve the life of these patients. Stammzellen werden auch genutzt, um Patienten mit Blutkrankheiten, wie beispielsweise Leukämie, zu behandeln. Es ist ausreichend, einige wenige Blutstammzellen zu transplantieren, um das gesamte Blutsystem neu zu bilden. Stammzellen bestimmter Gewebe und Organe können nur Zellen dieses Gewebes bilden. Wir wissen, dass es Stammzellen in der Haut, im Blut, im Darm und in den Muskeln gibt. Wir wissen jedoch nicht, ob andere Organe ihre eigenen Stammzellen haben oder wie nützlich diese wären. In einem ganz frühen Entwicklungsstadium gibt es eine andere Art von Stammzelle. Sie ist kontrovers. Sie kann zu jeder spezialisierten Zelle werden. Die embryonale Stammzelle. Diese Zelle kommt aus der Blastozyste, einem Embryonalstadium vor der Einnistung in die Gebärmutter. Für Unfruchtbarkeitsbehandlungen werden Blastozysten im Labor produziert. Werden sie nicht für eine Schwangerschaft genutzt, können sie für die Forschung gespendet werden. In the early embryo, there's a group of cells that can give rise to all the tissues of the body. These cells are the ones we're very, very interested in because we know that we can take the cells from the early embryo and grow them in culture and maintain them in a state where they can contribute to all the tissues. What we're seeing here is the blastocyst stage of development. It's smaller than a pinhead, actually. You can't see it without the microscope. So basically, at this stage, the cells in the embryo, these are the cells here, they can make any tissue at all. What we have to do is isolate these cells. One way is we can remove the trophectoderm cells so that we're just left with a clean inner cell mass. So we can grow these in culture, and they'll grow multiply until we have large numbers of these cells that still have the capacity, is still able to form any tissue at all. Embryonale Stammzellen können zu Herz, Blut, Gehirn oder Hautzellen werden, je nachdem, wie man sie behandelt. Diese Stammzellen haben sich in Herzzellen verwandelt. When you're working with stem cells, you're always observing the cells and you're trying to understand how it is they can do what they can do. And you're trying actually to make them do what you want to do. It's almost a, like a battle of wills. Heute wissen die Wissenschaftler, dass eine Stammzelle einen langen Weg mit vielen Entscheidungen geht, bis sie zu einer spezialisierten Zelle wird. Ein Zusammenspiel innerer und äußerer Signale führt jede Stammzelle auf diesem Weg zur Spezialisierung. Normalerweise gibt der Körper diese Signale. Wissenschaftler versuchen, der Natur dieser Signale auf die Spur zu kommen und sie zu nutzen, um reine Populationen jedes beliebigen Zelltyps herstellen zu können. The challenge to us then is to understand each decision and how it's controlled and then how to provide those signals to, to impose the direction on the system. And once we get to a point where that begins to happen, 
then you suddenly see, well, actually, we could use this then to address medical conditions and medical problems. So work that we have been doing recently has been focused on trying to make stem cells for the brain from embryonic stem cells. And it turns out that we're able to do this and that these neural stem cells, as we call them, now are no longer able to make every type of cell. They can only make three types of cell, the three types of cell that exist in the brain. So this is an important first step, we believe, in creating a, a useful and very powerful system that can be applied both for drug screening and perhaps in the end for transplantation. Große Mengen dieser im Labor erzeugten menschlichen Zellen schaffen die Grundlage für verbesserte Testsysteme für neue medizinische Behandlungen und könnten so dazu beitragen, die Zahl der Tierversuche zu reduzieren. Dieselben Zellen können uns auch dabei helfen zu verstehen, was mit Zellen passiert, die von komplexen Krankheiten wie Alzheimer, Parkinson's und Diabetes betroffen sind. Diabetes is a, a chronic disease defined by these high blood sugar levels that stay high just because there is not enough insulin. We know that the insulin is produced by uh, cells in the pancreas, we call them beta cells. Transplantations of those cells are now done in clinics. Those cells are isolated from uh, donor organs. After the transplantation with those cells, you can normalize uh, diabetes and you can correct diabetes. The major obstacle to, to beta cell transplantation in diabetes is the shortage in donor cells. We can transplant only 25 patients per year, while there are more than 50,000 patients in Belgium that are treated with insulin. We have to look for other techniques to produce insulin-making cells in the laboratory. What the researchers um, try to do is first examine this path, this evolution between the embryonic stem cell and the insulin-producing beta cell, and then to also try to isolate the different stages, uh, the different kind of stem cells on the way to beta cells. And if one can then isolate them and let them grow, proliferate in the laboratory, then you can make as many insulin producing cells as you as you want and that's the, the goal of many investigators in the world. The embryonic stem cell area is, uh, is a very exciting area. It really has opened the, uh, a new world, that of regenerative medicine. We have now bridges between all the laboratories that have a particular expertise working together uh, we will be in a good position to examine, to investigate its enormous potential. But the enthusiasm should not cover all the, the technical and scientific questions and obstacles that exist and that will have to be studied very carefully. Stammzellforschung ist ein schnelllebiges Gebiet. Weltweit gibt es fast täglich Berichte von neuen Erkenntnissen. Sie kreieren neue Herausforderungen für die Wissenschaftler, die versuchen, diese Zellen nutzbar zu machen und die Medizin der Zukunft zu gestalten. So cells are the, the building blocks of the different tissues and organs of the body. And many people are interested in this. But what captured my imagination was when I realized that in development, cells actually have to make choices and decide to become different types of cells and understanding how that is controlled, how that decision is made. If you could understand that, it seems to me, then you would really understand the most important thing about life.